Uh, I'm gonna talk about um, connected cars, not uh, in, a, in a perspective of what is the value of data and how can we move forward data-driven business. Um, I try to focus more on the other end of the spectrum, which is uh, real-time use cases. Um, let me introduce myself and our company, if you're not familiar with T-Systems, um, we're in the business of connected cars since almost 20 years. It started with trailer tracking and core telematics in the uh, trucking industry. Um, but meanwhile, we connect more than 14 million cars. We deliver and develop um, more than uh, almost 200 use cases in, in various directions. Um, we also engaged in, of course, research projects in, in the area of autonomous driving, of course, of 5G because of our parent company, Deutsche Telekom. And we also progress into mobility areas, whether it's um, smart city or uh, yeah, parking or whatever. Um, where did all this start, Connected Vehicles? First of all, let me show you an interesting um, commercial from OnStar, who was actually the company who introduced Connected Cars. This is Batman. How do you make door unlocked? I'll do it right away. If you get locked out, an OnStar advisor can unlock your doors by remote. Even the most self-sufficient driver who needs a little help now and then. OnStar, this is Jeff Fuelman. How can I help you, Batman? Hello, I'm Jeff Fuel. Your station is two miles ahead on your left. Thanks. <laughs> So um, what have we seen actually in this, in this uh, commercial, which is always already 20 years old? Um, it was use cases uh, and, and concierge services, uh, a remote unlock of a car and uh, a lookup of a gas station close by. These are typical use cases which bring the value of connected vehicles to the drivers, right? Um, this, this was the beginning, more or less. It was about safety. It was a little bit about convenience. And if we look at um, this slide here, this is where we see the majority of um, the value of connected vehicle use cases. It is uh, on, a, on a, a scale where we, where we um, position the time constraints of, of these services. It's, it's in between seconds and minutes you have to deliver the service so the driver or, uh, of course, the OEM can gain from the benefit. Now, if you lock the door, if you unlock the door, you need a response from the car within seconds. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, if it's about location-based services, speed alert, all these kind of things, it is a very short time frame that you need to be able to deliver this service. Um, if you, of course, if you want to remotely disable the car when it was stolen or uh, it was, you want geofencing, you can further move into the areas of many, many seconds or maybe even minutes. Uh, it still works, the use case. So it's not really critical that you deliver the data and the service within very few um, seconds. If you then uh, move further, and we talked about, a lot about today um, about remote, um, remotely leveraging the data yeah, for data-driven business cases. Sorry, this shut up. Um, then you can even go further down to days or weeks or even months. Yeah, if if there is a lot of value in data if you collect it over a time series of a few months or even years. So this is the completely other uh, end of the spectrum of um, connected vehicle services and how they, they can uh, benefit the customer, whoever the customer is, yeah? whether it's the OEM, whether it's the end customer, or if it's other B2B um, customers. 
And now going back to the left side, which which comes into play just recently because of technology involvement, technology progress, is real time use cases. Yeah, there we talk about milliseconds, and we talk about ultra reliability because um, when we talk about connected ADAS. Um, advanced driver assistance systems, for example, or a use case like teleoperations, um, it's really critical that you deliver every data packet uh, in almost real time, yeah, in, in milliseconds, the 30 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, definitely below one second. And this is the new frontier because uh, everybody we've seen so far in connected vehicles was more in the areas of a few seconds 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or minutes, as you can see here. Now we're moving into a completely new area, and this comes a lot, of course, with a lot of challenges. Um, so if, if we look at this picture, um, typically we talk about vehicle to whatever network or um, backend. We also talk about vehicle to infrastructure and vehicle to vehicle communication, but in, in reality, at least from a telco perspective, um, finally, most of these use cases will be connected over some kind of backend or network. And, and that makes it very hard um, to, yeah, to achieve uh, milliseconds of latency and, uh, of course, the reliability. So let's look at a few of these use cases, um, ADAS, um, in, in, a, in a fashion where we where we complement the onboard system with some kind of connectivity with sensors or data out of the car, outside the car. It starts, of course, with uh, simple things like we're using data from a traffic light you know, or from a, from a camera outside the car to complement the onboard sensors or whatever the, the onboard capability of performing the task. Um, it goes further with information from other vehicles. So we could, you could, we could use sensors of other vehicles to extend the range, for example, of the own vehicle. But we can also um, use information about the maneuvers of another car to, um, to be able to steer the own car in a better way, uh, especially when we talk about autonomous driving. Um, of course, teleoperation is only feasible if you uh, have the environment perception and, and you're able to um, control the actuators of a car. So that requires a lot of connectivity. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in a second. Uh, then the maneuver management, when more cars, at mi minimum two cars, um, talk to each other and, and tell each other what they want to do in the next few seconds or maybe even milliseconds. So we can enable use cases like the tuning or intersection assistant. Uh, and then we have, of course, traffic management, um, which is on a higher perspective where you centrally try to reroute uh, a bulk of cars, yeah, uh, use cases like vehicle on demand and, and things like that. These are all use cases in the area of connected ADAS, and uh, especially here in, the, in the, the three areas in the middle, we have real-time requirements. Yeah, they will not work at all, or at least not really reliable, when we're not able to deliver data and the service within uh, less than one second, and, and much, much uh, lower latencies. Let's look at teleoperations. Um, what is it, first of all? Uh, of course, it's a, it's a remote control of a car from a distance. Could be next, next building, could be uh, a few thousand kilometers away. Everything is possible. We've demonstrated that already. Um, how does it work? You need, uh, first of all, sufficient access to the environment perception, perception of the car you want to drive. Uh, as you were in the car, actually, um, you want to see the environment. Ideally, you want to hear. Um, maybe you want to feel a little bit like a like a race driver, um, but at least you need to see as much as possible. And you need access to actuation. You need to be able to steer, brake, and accelerate. 
and um, ideally also to horn to to turn uh, the the turn signals on or maybe to push back have access to the gearbox um, but at least to be able to steer brake and accelerate that that is the minimum use cases are um, uh, for non-autonomous cars you want to replace the driver because usually there are in, in many use cases the driver is not productive enough yeah, because there is a lot of waiting time or walking time sometimes or it's the dangerous um, zone so you want to relocate the driver out of a dangerous zone whether it's temperature or dust or uh, whatever explosiveness um, in autonomous driving uh, use cases it's, it's most often a fallback because we all know that technology can fail um, and it's a complement. So very often a car is designed for a purpose for specific use cases. You know, they can perform the task quite well, but there are other um, driving situations where the uh, where the drive robot is not able to handle the situation. There you would complement the autonomy with a teleoperator. Let's look at some examples. This is, for example, a, a road construction. It's an easy automation task. Yeah, this this car has to drive. In a, in a very low speed, only straightforward. You can do this uh, quite easily, but um, of course you need to get the car there um, over public roads potentially. And you need to handle situations like, like here, yeah, where um, the straightforward um, is interrupted with cars coming from the right side or whatever. Um, so this is a, a typical example of complement complementary um, setup or uh, kind of a dialogue between the autonomous drive robot and the teleoperator. Um, another example is sweepers on an airfield. Um, they can perform the task quite well, but how do you get the car there and how do you get back? Uh, uh, if, you, if you want to enable this use case, you need to be able um, to bring the, to to actually uh, drive the car by a teleoperator, everything else wouldn't make sense. You can't leave the car in this area. You're not allowed to get off the car. Um, also, if you talk about or think about um, rental cars, um, you you hand the car back, and then there, the car needs to get to the cleaning. It gets needs to get on the parking garage. Maybe relocated quite often. Um, get back to the to the pickup station or even to the terminal in, in the airport or wherever you want to uh, yeah, get into the car. So these are typical things where you don't need to wait for autonomy because it's quite complex, but you can you can perform this with a teleoperator. And why is it a challenge? We talked about real time latency. We'll come to that in a minute. Uh, but first of all, it's also about the uh, bandwidth in, in teleoperations. Yeah, you need at least four HD video streams. This is 50 times less than one human eye. So you have already a uh, much lower um, environment per perception. On the other side, um, it's already one car is already almost 50% of a network cell. Um, so you're consuming all uh, bandwidth, you're, rely you're reliable on this um, bandwidth. And then latency, of course, um, imagine this is what you see on your screen, yeah, your own car, uh, and, and there is an obstacle in front, but the car in real is further progressed. If you drive 30 kilometers per hour, the car is one meter or more ahead, and if you start to turn the uh, steering wheel, for example, if you brake, the car will drive another meter before the signal gets into the car and starts to turn the wheels, not the steering wheel, the real wheels on the car. Yeah, so this is the uh, challenge of teleoperation. And now imagine some of these situations. Yeah, you have bad signal. We all know this, this happens whether it's um, in, in remote areas or underground, or you have high data consumption yeah, because of whatever people around you or other cars around you, maybe another teleoperated car is very close by. Um, and the worst thing about um, this is these conditions constantly change. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't say easy, but it's, it's manageable if, if you know about the situation and it's, it's all constant. 
yeah, you can you can deal with it. But if this always changes from let's say 30 milliseconds to 200, and you don't know exactly when and how, this becomes a real challenge. Now, um, I want to show you a demo, a short video. This was um, actually recorded in uh, February in Stuttgart, where Autopia, our partner for teleoperation, and, and we won uh, the Startup Audubon event, uh, Startup Audubon um, Innovation Award. And this station was in Stuttgart, and the car you see on the screens was in Tel Aviv, a few thousand kilometers away. And then, as you can see, car could be driven almost like you would sit uh, in the car in Tel Aviv. We've actually demonstrated this last week in our demo center in Stuttgart to the Gate Alliance and Airport um, uh, Association for uh, German Airport te te uh, Technology and Equipment Providers. Again, the same thing. Um, it works quite well even under LTE conditions, uh, but of course it could be improved with uh, better network uh, and so forth. So with that said, um, I would like to close. Um, more details in the Q&A session, I can explain you how that all works. Uh, now we talked a lot, a lot about use cases and challenges. Of course, I, I also have some information about how it works. Uh, let's, let's do this in the Q&A. Um, and I also would like to invite you to our demo center if you're interested. Um, or to join the Automotive IT Congress, one of the next big events for this industry, I guess, in, in hopefully in real, not virtually, so we can meet all together. And I would also like to um, ad advertise our um, Connected Car Industry Dialogue, which will take place in two sessions next week, July 14th, July 16th, with a lot of interesting discussions, not so much about this um, uh, Teleoperation and, and autonomy is more about uh, the classical, I would say classical or still standard um, connected vehicles, but a lot of challenges also in this area. And with that said, I think we're on time um, to stop the presentation.